I welcome each and every one of you uh, to this convocation ceremony for 2023, the BAC convocation ceremony. ceremony. Uh, I have been tasked with sharing some wisdom which I'm taught to possess. Some words of advice in eight different areas. The first one is purpose. We are born, we live, we die. Life is a gift. Don't waste it. So just promise yourself to be the best version of yourself. Secondly, values. It's important that we all lead a life of values. And for us to find certain values that will be our moral compass to take us through life's journey. First one is as you enter the work world, your workforce, being professional. The second one is accountability. Take ownership. Third one is empathy. We all feel, you know, we always feel that, you know, we have things bad, but there are others who are worse off. And always put yourself in someone else's shoes when you look at a problem or anything that is going on. Have empathy for others. The fourth, and I think this is the real key to happiness, money is not the key to happiness. The key to happiness is gratitude. Being happy with what you have. Because if you're in a quest to always chase after things, you're like that hamster on the wheel that will just keep running. I've made my first million, I want my 10 million, I want my 100 million, I want this, I want that. And you will never ever stop to just be happy. And the next one is, no virtue can be more important than humility. Always be humble. Realize that whoever you or I, or whatever we think we've done, whatever we think we've accomplished, at the end of the day, we've all got a certain time on this planet, and then we leave. And that's what education really is about, is that culmination of the formal learning and all that informal learning that you go through with your colleagues, your classmates, your friends, your teachers, that entire circle around you. So values. Thirdly, relevance. The biggest challenge you're going to face is how do we stay relevant? Darwin put it this way, it is not the strongest nor the most intelligent of species that will survive, but the one most adaptable to change. Toffler said, the illiterate of the future will not be those who can't read or write, but those who can't learn, unlearn and relearn. And this is not just for individuals. Countries have become irrelevant, companies have become irrelevant, and the same goes for people. So. Your challenge, you're not like our generation. For us, we could just go study law or medicine or dentistry or engineering or whatever and be very happy sitting there for the next 30 years because the rate of change wasn't as fast. But today, it is a different game. And you need to be up to it. You need to continuously learn, improve, and not just within your area. So how do we stay relevant? The fourth thing learn. You must be prepared to learn. Gandhi put it best when he says, live as if you will die tomorrow, learn as if you will live forever. That thirst for knowledge, that hunger to learn must always be there with you. Charles Tremendous Jones put it in another statement which I like. He says, the person you are today and five years from now will depend on two things. The people you meet and the books you read. The next thing is to build competencies. I am very much an advocate of what we call a polymath. A polymath is basically a person who has skills or knowledge and the ability in diverse areas. If you learn across fields, you become much more useful to the community and you will find that you are really empowered. You've got your purpose, your values, relevance, learning, and building competencies. Now look at brand. Your brand is your most important asset. In actual effect, each one of us here is a brand. And that's your most single most important asset. And you have to build that brand. You have to work on building that brand and protecting that brand. And how do you do that? Every interaction with another person be it a face-to-face -face interaction or online, is your brand in action. The next one is giving back. 
And for me, I always think, you know, if you had six billion people on this planet doing more for the world than the world has done for them, we would be living in a very different world. And why do I bring this up? Today, everyone can, can do, you know, things which were not thought possible. Technology has been a great leveler. You know, getting help, getting troops together, getting people to go do good has never been easier. I think during the pandemic, uh, we've got this thing called Give Back and we have the Make It Right movement and Uplift two organizations. We worked with our partners and actually in the two years, we managed to give out aid to half a million people. 200,000 in the form of food provisions, which lasted them for two weeks. Many of them were wage earners, migrant workers, refugees, B40 families. Then, balance. Balance is your work-life balance. You sometimes have to pay your dues. You may have that first job when you come out and you graduate. You may have to take a job that you don't like that much. But always keep 10 to 20% to do things you enjoy in the initial stage. But if you find something that you enjoy, then you will, you will never have to work a day in your life. I always say I've never worked a day in my life because I enjoy doing what I do. You may not have that luxury just yet, but at the end of the day, find it. Okay? And always have that time for fun, for family, for other things, which has got to be important.